Before I travel back in time and successfully build this thing, I have a really exciting announcement to make. I just opened my Patreon page and it's a place where you'll be able to support my channel if you want to and also gain access to the plans for this gearbox. I hope you understand why I'm not giving these away for free. These take a ridiculous amount of time to design, a little over 25 hours actually. And of course, I will be uploading more plans and benefits to my Patreon page over time. Anyway, here's the video. I'm gonna start off by making all of the 8mm thick pieces. I'm not gonna work on the gears just yet. One thing I should point out, this piece is supposed to be 4mm thick. I forgot to point this out in the plans. Notice how I'm utilizing the straight edge of the plywood sheet to save some time. These gear selector components are made out of parts that are nearly identical. So instead of cutting all of these out separately, I nailed together two layers of plywood and I'm going to cut them out at the same time. Before I make the final cuts that separate the two parts, it's a good idea to sand them together as well. The reason why I haven't cut out these gears together with the other pieces is because the situation with the gears is a bit more complicated. There are two gears that need to fit in this location of the shaft. And it would be impossible to fit a gear with a 12mm hole over this obstacle. And because of that, we have to cut the gear in half and reassemble it onto the shaft. Now, just cutting a gear in half wouldn't really work because the cut would remove some of the wood from the gear and uh, when reassembling it, it would turn oval shaped. And because of that, we need to make these two gears in two pieces from the start. Just testing this gear with the 12 millimeter bit and there's quite a lot of play this way so the hole is oval shaped which isn't a big problem i can just sand these surfaces a little bit to get it closer to a circle now the fit is a lot better but the gaps between the teeth here and there are way too small now so hopefully i can fix this with a little bit of sandpaper and fingers crossed this gear actually works. Other than these two gears, the other ones are pretty self-explanatory and that's how the 8mm parts finished. And now I'll make the 4mm parts in pretty much the same way. However, instead of using these templates, I prefer to just copy the circle sizes and cut them out of a round circle. Thank <laughs> you. 
Some important things to mention about these two pieces is that there is a 10 millimeter hole going through this piece uh, where the slime is. And for this two millimeter piece, uh, it is very thin and fragile and I'm choosing the wood grain to go this way because when this piece fits into here, I want these parts to be well supported. So those are all the flat pieces finished, now it's time to go to the lathe. I prepared these two blanks to make the shafts, and as you can see they're a little bit oversized. That's because I want to put this gearbox into an actual car, and I don't know how much extra axle I'll need, so it's better to have more than not enough. This is where precision is really important. You want the parts to run smoothly, but also without any play. So really take your time when making these. These two templates are for testing the diameter of the shaft. After a lot of checking and sanding and checking again, uh, the diameter is pretty good. Uh, it's a little bit snug in some parts, but that's fine because uh, the gears are going to be glued onto this uh, shaft so we don't really have to spin. I'm done with the 15mm outside diameter, now I'm going to make the 12mm uh, thick parts. This is always an exciting moment because you get to test fit the majority of your mechanism. This is also a good time to install the reverse gear, gear reverser gear. That is an actual sentence. I found that the best way to connect these two half gears is by gluing them with strips of paper. I was pleasantly surprised because everything runs quite smoothly without any adjustments. I did use a lot of wax to lubricate everything. I recommend you always waxing your gears because they work much, much better that way. I wanted absolute precision when it came to making these two slots. So I made this huge setup just to drill them out. This wooden clamp holds the shaft and prevents it from rotating. And this piece of plywood acts as a guide for me to push the piece along. And this piece of wood raises the clamp a little bit to keep everything level. Not sure if you could see that, but the bit was bending a little bit for some reason. It didn't want to go straight into that line. I'll try to set it further into the chuck so that it doesn't have as much length and see if that works. Well, the bit still keeps sliding off, so I think I'll have to do this manually. This is definitely not what I had in mind by saying absolute precision. However, as long as this dowel can slide smoothly in here, there shouldn't really be any problems. The 
this shifter needs to go through here and it can't move as much as it should be able to because it's restricted right here. So you have to expand this gap to allow more movement. But whatever you do, do not expand this gap. I'm going to use a Dremel to do this. You'll have to do the same thing with the plate that goes over uh, this shifter. And speaking of this plate, uh, we're presented with a bit of a puzzle because this needs to fit through this. Now, you're not usually supposed to use brute force for puzzles. But it seemed to have worked out this time. Not bad. I'm gonna start the final assembly by assembling the shifter. I'll not be using wax in this component because it is important that there is a lot of friction between these parts. And I'm also skipping all the parts where I'm drilling holes for the screws. I wanna use glue as little as possible and instead use screws so that I have the ability to disassemble the entire mechanism later on. And I messed up. Uh, you can see how these pieces were supposed to go here. And this piece was supposed to stick out 8 millimeters, And it doesn't. So I'll have to remove this piece and make a new one. And the problem is that it's glued on here. So I'll have to think of a way to cut it off or break it off without harming this piece. Luckily the super glue wasn't quite as strong as I thought it would be. And I was able to just break it off. Uh, I'll make a new piece instead of just moving this over 8 millimeters because I don't want this hole over here. Now that I'm done fixing this, I can actually connect this outer perimeter. I should probably explain, I made these off camera, but there really isn't much to them. I just turned them on a lathe, uh, drilled these holes through them, and then also drilled these through pretty much the same way I did with these. I will now have to glue on all of these so-called dogs, I think. It's quite a tedious process. I'm using super glue to make it a bit faster. I'm also using the dowel as a guide to align the dogs on the gears. Here's the progress so far. I only attached the dog teeth to the reverse and first gears, and also the gear selectors. And now I can actually test out how it works. So putting it into first gear, the teeth, uh, the dogs engage. And now I'm driving the first gear, skipping over to reverse. Now I'm driving the reverse gear. And here it is in neutral. Now is the part that I have not been looking forward to. I'll need to glue on these two other gears. I really hope this whole idea works and if it doesn't then the entire gearbox is basically useless. I'm gonna glue these dogs over the gaps to reinforce them a little bit. I reassembled it again to check the middle gears and I'm so glad to say that everything works as it should. So again, first gear is being driven right now. These gears are spinning but don't mind them, they're spinning because of friction. 
only this gear is being driven. So now, second gear. It is not very well engaged. This is normal when there is no load. When the gearbox is under load, this shouldn't be happening. So again, the second gear is being driven. Third. Right here. And finally, reverse. I have to do something about this uh, screw. Either trim these dogs or um, put this, push the screw a little bit deeper in. But other than that, everything works really well. So now I just have to trim these pieces off and of course glue on these gears onto the shaft. I think I'm gonna do that tomorrow. I really need to get some sleep now. All right, uh, this should be pretty easy. I ran into some small problems with parts colliding in places they shouldn't be, so I had to uh, sand off these dogs and also these teeth. Same for here. And after that, everything has been running smoothly without any problems. I assume this is the part you've all been waiting for. I attached the input to a cordless drill and added some tape so you can see the rotation of the output. I won't be able to talk while this thing is running because it is super loud. Uh, basically, I'll bring it through first, second, uh, third, and then into reverse at low RPM, and then put it into third gear and give it max RPM, and see how it handles high RPM. Those of you who have stuck around to the end of this video will be glad to know that I'll be building a car to fit this gearbox into over the next few months. So if you want to watch me do that and probably completely lose my mind in the process, make sure to subscribe and I'll be uploading the next video as soon as I can. Anyway, thank you for watching.